Welcome back. Time to take a look at how regional markets have opened up for business this morning. Shares in Tokyo, Seoul and Sydney are in tight ranges after recent strong gains. Japanese shares are consolidating ahead of this week's Bank of Japan policy meeting and a slew of economic data from China, Japan's largest export market. However, hopes that the European Central Bank would buy short-dated bonds in Europe's most battered economies are helping to boost sentiment. And to talk more with us, us about stocks and the global economy is Justin Harper of IG Markets Singapore. He joins us from our studio in downtown Singapore. Justin, uh, the benchmark S&P 500 index finished uh, last week in the positive for a fourth straight session. How long can stocks uh, rally in this week? Anything else? Uh, you talk about sentiment, but actually based on measures like uh, dividends and price to earnings ratios, equities appear cheap compared to other assets. So are stocks the best house in a bad neighborhood? Yeah, I, th I think so. If you look at some of the yeah some of the financial ratios, they they still look very attractive. And it, and if you talk about equities and seasoned investors, they would have known that the you know you have peaks and troughs. We're going through a trough sadly at the moment. That will be ridden out, and hopefully there'll be a peak once the eurozone crisis is over. If you're a little bit more experienced, you might be worried about the markets and how jittery and volatile they're being, and you might run away and sell you know sell your equities, which would be the worst thing to do. So if you know what you're doing, you're seasoned and you keep a cool head. There's there's nothing wrong with being involved in in equity markets right now uh, now is it a weak economic environment though I think traders and investors are very much uh, buoyed by market sentiment rather than fundamentals and last week they had a bit of a disappointment where the central banks decided not to act and uh, to ease monetary policy and so after that they were looking for some good news on Friday night we had that with the US employment data showing you know non-farm uh, payroll data had, had increased so you know that was good news and that when we saw you know a really good rally in uh, in Asia today how long will it last well already it's starting to fade out in Wall Street and uh, Europe and they'll be looking for another you know driving catalyst uh, coming coming this week it's hard to say where that comes from you know we look at Chinese data coming out later this week so you know that that could pull the markets further but at the moment it's very much based on you know market sentiment more than anything else uh, you talk about sentiment but actually based on measures like uh, dividends and price to earnings ratios equities appear cheap compared to other assets so are stocks the best house in a bad neighborhood yeah, I, th I think so. If you look at some of the yeah some of the financial ratios, they they still look very attractive. And it, and if you talk about equities and seasoned investors, they would have known that the you know you have peaks and troughs. We're going through a trough sadly at the moment. That will be ridden out, and hopefully there'll be a peak once the eurozone crisis is over. If you're a little bit more experienced, you might be worried about the markets and how jittery and volatile they're being, and you might run away and sell you know sell your equities, which would be the worst thing to do. So if you know what you're doing, you're seasoned and you keep a cool head. There's there's nothing wrong with being involved in in equity markets right now uh, now is the chief Mario Draghi has gone on the offensive by openly picking a fight with Germany's uh, Bundesbank will this prevent a stronger ECB action to the debt crisis do you think yeah, I think this is, you know, negative for the Eurozone and, and how outside investors view what's happening from the policymakers. You know, there's two sort of negative points here. Number one is it slows down the whole process and, you know, the, and the Eurozone crisis is something that everyone wants to move on from and wants it to be dealt with quickly. And all this infighting just slows down the whole process. And investors look out, you know, from the outside world and see this, uh, this lack of harmony and they're worried about actually what they will do and the impetus. So, yeah, I think it's, it's pretty negative for, for the outside investment community thinking about how well the uh, the policymakers will cope with the uh, with the crisis. So, as things stand, do you expect the ECB to announce a plan to provide uh, liquidity within the next two weeks? I think we saw look, Mario Draghi come out with some very strong words, fighting talk last week, and that wasn't backed up with any uh, any stimulus policy. There's been snips here and there. They've offered Greece uh, an emergency loan, and they're helping obviously Spain with their with their banking sector. So I think we'll see little cuts and snips here and there. As for a widespread uh, policy stimulus, I'm not sure we we will see that you know anytime soon. Okay, let's uh, look a little closer to home. China's uh, to release economic data starting this uh, Thursday, covering everything from trade to bank loans and investment. Is the economy strong enough, though, to cruise through a recession uh, in Europe and stagnant growth in the U.S.? 
I think, you know, we've looked at some key data from China and seen that uh, GDP for the last quarter, you know, was lower eight, uh, uh, below 8% for the first time in three years. Manufacturing data is not looking good, so it is causing a few worries. However, you know, I believe that we could be in, a, you know, a U-shaped recovery here where things start to bottom out and we, and we start to see recovery. You know, as you said, at the end of the week, we've got this economic data coming out, which will give us a, a good insight. So, uh, you know, I never thought there was any worry of uh, pushing the panic button with China. We are going through a bit of, uh, you know, a, a slow spell for the Chinese economy. It's moving from double-digit growth to something more reasonable, 7 8%, and that takes time, and there'll be a few nerves jangling, you know, along the way. Well, Beijing has both the will and the means to provide extra fiscal and monetary uh, stimulus if growth flags. Why the restraint then, unlike the uh, financial crisis in 2008? I think you look at 2008 and the asset bubbles that were created by China willy-nilly opening up its purse and giving money and seeing property, you know, spike the way it has. And we're only just seeing those prices come down and inflation, actually, they've got a lid on it now. So they're obviously they've been very careful, but they have been making cuts. They've cut the triple R three times. They've cut interest rates uh, twice in, I think, six months. So there are snips happening within the, uh, the PBOC. It's just they're careful not to do anything too dramatic. Uh, no outside central bank watches China more closely than the Reserve Bank of Australia. Uh, will the RBA leave rates unchanged at a policy meeting today? Yeah, I think so. They've cut rates quite aggressively, you know, this year already, and they'll have to see how that's feeding its way into the economy. And the economy is still pretty strong. The Aussie dollar is strong. Inflation is coming down. So, the, so it's still in good health. I mean, there's the carbon tax, which, is, which has just been announced and is, is going to feed its way through to the economy. That may uh, raise inflation. It may keep the lid on interest rates being cut. So for the time being, I think they will uh, sit and wait and see what the uh, previous rate cuts, uh, how, what effect they have on the economy. Okay, last question for you then, Justin. Uh, Indonesia's GDP climbed 6.4% in the second quarter. Is the economy insulated from the global downturn? Sadly, I don't think any economy, whether it's the huge, you know, US economy, China or the Eurozone, they're all affected by each other. Indonesia is a very important market. It's the biggest uh, uh, market in Southeast Asia, and it put on, uh, you know, GDP growth of plus six percent so it's doing very well but still it's very vulnerable to what happens in China because that's its big export market for commodities so still vulnerable but it's you know it's a good sign for ASEAN that some economies are still performing well during this downturn. Okay well thanks very much indeed for that Justin always good to see you on the show that was uh, Justin Harper of IG Markets Singapore and that's a uh, business wrap back to Stephen Yvonne. All right thanks